found a new potential BMW project and it's up in Oregon. And so I'm heading up there on Saturday with a trailer in tow. But before we do that, I need to shake down Big Bertha, see if she's roadworthy to make the trip. So let's get this pulled out, get Big Bertha pulled in and look her over. Load up bear. Good boy. You too, Sage. So I'm by myself today as usual, but I'm going to set up the tripod underneath the front left here on the truck and record while I get inside and turn the wheel. Maybe we can catch something out of the ordinary on camera since I don't have two sets of eyes with me. And I'm trying to find this creak and this popping noise coming from the front left. Very happy to see that there is no coolant coming out of the water pump. I've had to reseal this water pump like three times. So probably not sway bar links. I couldn't see any movement in the tie rod in the video, but that noise was apparent. I replaced this inner and outer tie rod. I also replaced the idler arm. I also replaced the pitman arm and the steering box and the hydro boost. But this car, this truck does also use um, this aftermarket cross member from CST because this is a drop cross member kit. So this is all control arm and steering all drop down like four inches with this aftermarket cross member that goes on. So it does have some heim joints that connects the center link to the tie rods. Wonder if any of that has gone bad. Just want to make sure she's safe for the travels ahead. I think I got it in frame. Right here, this is my aftermarket center link and I think this center link right here is cracked. I'm going to leave the camera right where it is and uh, jump back in and run the truck and see if I can find that issue right there because, oh boy, if that's the case, I cannot take this truck up to Oregon like this. That's going to be an issue. All right, let's see if I can get a good view on it. Let's check the footage. Well guys, I found it. My, my center link snapped in half. Thank God I caught it because that is a recipe for disaster. If that would have snapped and broke loose, I would have lost all my steering and driving on mountain roads up to Oregon, I probably would have been facing a very dangerous situation. So thank God I found it. I need to find a welder and get this fixed up. I think I can weld it on the truck. Um, I need to start making some phone calls. Well, guys, I just got off the horn with my buddy, John. He's got a 240 volt MIG welder that would get the job done totally fine. Uh, the truck is not, I'm not very confident driving it down to him though. If that center link splits and doesn't match back up, then I'm in big trouble and I'm going to lose my steering. So I could tow it to him and maybe unload it at his shop and we could weld it up down there. Um, He's going to call me back in a couple hours and we're going to try to figure something out. I can also just delay the trip up to Oregon and let the buyer, let the seller know that I won't be able to make it up this weekend. I was really looking forward to it though, but this truck needs to be in good working order in order for me to drive it up to Oregon. And right now it is on the brink of failure. So we'll see. We'll find out in a couple hours, but I'm just glad I found it before I made the drive because that could have ended tragically. 
Should make for some fun content though. Okay, so I just got off the horn with CST. They have a replacement center link for about 280 bucks, but they're out at the powder coater right now, so they're not gonna be available until tomorrow or Wednesday of next week before I can get the shipping process up here to Northern California. So while I'm waiting to hear back about the welder, I got the rear wheels pulled off and I'm working on getting my old airbags installed back on the truck. I took them off a few years ago because I was trying to get this thing to ride as soft as possible. But if I'm going to be towing a car hauler, I need to get these bags back in place. So ran down to the hardware store. I got a bunch of new carriage bolts as well as all hardware required for the kit. Um, the hardware was pretty old and tired and it needed refreshing. So now I'm working on getting these back in. I figured might as well slap the camera out and bring you guys along with me. So that's what we're doing. I got the compressor reconnected after I discovered my center link is snapped in half. And so just trying to make progress, get this truck ready for a long travel. I don't even know if these carriage bolts will fit. There we go. Okay. We're in business. And I'm using the plug from the Autoline Ventus to cap off this airbag. Have it sandwiched, some vacuum in it. Working good. Now we can release our plug. That looks pretty good. Need some extra hardware. Sandwich these up first. <sighs> Ow. I just punched myself in the face. That's because that 15 is sloppy. Is it a 14? It is a 14. And pop it in. Okay, we have an airbag on one side of the truck. Funny story, well not funny, good story. I was going down to Southern California for Christmas in 2020 and I didn't have my toolbox or a garage up here yet so I took my truck to a local Chevy dealer. Well, I asked the guys there to do an oil service and a fuel filter and a tire rotation. Well, I'm driving down the 101 doing like 80 miles an hour at like seven in the morning and I hear a rattle in the front end. So I pull over and I go and look and they left all 32 lug nuts on my truck loose. And I almost lost a tire and died. And I was so livid. I called them and I tore them a new. And uh, there was a leak at the drain plug and they left all four of my wheels and tires loose. And I got so jaded after that. I was like, I'm never letting another person touch my truck. And yeah, that was just a couple years ago. Tried to let everybody know what happened so they don't make the same mistake and go to them. But yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Couldn't believe it. All right, let's get this other airbag in, huh? You see that big black lab running around here? That's Bear. That's my brother Evan's dog. He lives up here in Northern California with me. And uh, he has a really cool YouTube channel called Vanitor. I highly suggest you check it out, especially if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or you like just financial knowledge, business knowledge. Check his channel out. I think you'll really like it. I need to get this in. And this kind of just like has these C-clamp type deals and they just sort of straddle over the bump stops. Tricky part is getting these carriage bolts in. This is an old, outdated airbag system, but it was nice for the time in late 2000s when this truck was new, but it still works. 
This truck was a uh, was a tow rig before I bought it. Previous owner Sean down in San Diego, he used it as a tow rig for his fifth wheel. Then I bought it. It's a tough design. I think I might have missed some pieces, but as far as recording, but I got the airbag in. It is tight. I got to put this nut back onto my airline. That goes in. I need to choke it up a little bit more. That feels good. Now a little less. Thread you on there. What size are you? That is a impossible spot to get to. I don't know how the hell I'm going to tighten that. Okay, so this is how these bags work. They sandwich between the frame rail and the rear axle. There's also a bracket on the bottom that keeps them sandwiched tight. There are air lines that connect to both sides on both bags, but there's also a T in line, and there's a second stretch of air line that runs back here towards the trailer receiver. Those have Schrader valves in them, like you can see right here. That way, in case the compressor does fail, you can manually fill them up. So air lines run from the air bags, and then they chase the frame rail up, and they are routed through the frame rail to this compressor here. In addition to that, there is also some more air lines that run from the compressor up into the cab of the truck. They pop in right here on this driver's side kick panel. Then they run up underneath the dash. And on this setup, I have them routed over here to the center console area. There's this little panel here. I had it disconnected because I was doing some testing. But there are gauges and air lines connected to those gauges to show you the pressure displays. You use this switch to fire up the compressor and you use these two valves here to release pressure from both sides on the bags. Now I was super pumped on this clip because I wanted to show you how these bags work. But with ignition on, the compressor runs and fills it up to a default 10 PSI on both sides. Now sometimes there is a pressure differential on both sides, but you can just use those little valves in the front to bleed out the pressure and make them equal and opposite. Right here I'm just using some simple green and some water to spray down my fittings just to make sure I don't have any leaks, double checking my work, all that type of good stuff. And I was able to get that nut there tight enough to seal up that airline. Now like I said earlier, sometimes there is a pressure differential because the compressor fills up both bags equally. However, sometimes this left side bag sits a little bit lower. You just pump it up to your desired PSI and just go a little bit over and then you're able to just release pressure off whatever bag is higher and get a nice equal ride height in the rear. This truck does have half ton springs in the rear. I bought a 14 leaf pack from Deaver Springs down in Southern California. These are their Missoula off-road spec long travel leaf springs in the rear. Like I said, I was trying to get this truck to ride as smooth as possible when I first bought it, so I initially pulled these airbags out of the rear to try to get it to ride smoother, installed an extended shackle as well as these leaf packs. They've worked great, but putting these bags back in is going to affect my down travel. When they are completely deflated, um, they are sandwiched pretty tight, and the axle does not have too much room to move up, but it's no big deal. I'm going to be using this primarily as a tow rig, so I'll be happy with that. Here you can see the rear end of the truck dropping down as I deflate those bags. It does keep it substantially higher when I have them filled up to about 20 PSI. I can go as high as 40, 60, 80 PSI if I really need to, but it's kind of a nice feature to know that I can adjust the ride height in the rear, especially if I am towing something super heavy or like a fifth wheel in the future. All right, guys. Well, look at that bird turd, huh? I would call that a good day. I'm in good spirits. I'm happy I got those airbags back in the rear end. The truck is actually sitting a good bit higher. And if you look, I have those bags with zero PSI and they are completely collapsed and sitting flat. So I think it might actually affect my down travel too. But hey, screw it. It's a tow rig now and uh, she's going to be using, she's going to be getting used to haul trailers and boats and all kinds of stuff around the northern half of the state. So I'm happy with it. My steering is still snapped in two pieces though. Let's get one final look at that. Check that out. Center link snapped in half. So I don't know if I can weld it in the car. If I turn the wheel, I can shift it and get it to straighten out perfect again. But I don't think I can weld it in the car. 
Well, maybe. I think I might be able to with John's help. He's a pretty pro fabricator. I think I could sneak a MIG up through the top here and maybe get it down for the top sides and then hit the rest of the bottom. But honestly, I need a fabricator's opinion to figure out what to do on it. But this truck ain't going anywhere, so I'm going to have to call the seller of the BMW in Oregon and tell him I will not be able to make it up Saturday unless by some miracle John can help me get this welded up by tomorrow. My microphone has now died on me three times on this last take, so I switched over to my nice crackly microphone that's been screwing my audio for the last couple videos. I have two different microphones on the way. They will be arriving tomorrow on Friday, so I hope to be improving the audio quality for you guys here pretty soon. We'll see. These wireless microphones are kind of hit or miss. Anyways, we are wrapped up on the truck for the day. We got the airbags into the rear end, which I am super happy about. I'm going to be way more confident towing into the future because this is going to be primarily a tow rig now. My steering is still in two pieces and we are not going anywhere until I get that fixed. So if we can get a welder and get it fixed up tomorrow, I can leave for Saturday with my trailer rental and we can go check out this car in Oregon. If that doesn't happen, I'm going to have to wait probably until next Wednesday for CST suspension to ship me out a new center link. And then we're going to have to tear down the whole front end, disconnect the idler arm, the pitman arm, inner and outer tie rods, and it's going to be a whole deal. Um, and that's going to be a pain in the ass. But we'll see. I'll try to keep you guys informed. I got three pieces of content out in the last three days, and your guys' feedback and encouragement and comments have been absolutely awesome. So thank you very much, guys. I think we got a really, really cool community going on here and I've been super pumped on it, and I'm very humbled by you guys and your feedback and the motivation that you guys give me, so thank you very much. I'm getting a phone call, so I gotta go. Hope you enjoyed or hope you learned something new, and as always, folks, I'll see you on my next day off. Cheers.